All right, we're in chapter eight, and we're going to do exercise five in Zach's programming with Microsoft Visual Basic. This is the Professor Juarez solution. And um, I have this opened up here. So we downloaded the starter files, extracted them, opened up the solution. And I guess when you opened it, it probably looked like this. So, you know, open the project, open up the form. And here we are. So locate the click procedure, which declares and initializes two parallel one dimensional arrays. So when we look at that, here they are. So they're one dimensional arrays. So the simplest type of array, and these are parallel arrays, meaning that the information in spot zero of one array lines up with the information in spot zero of another array. So Helen got an A, Peter got a B, Yolanda got a B, Carl got an A, okay, et cetera, et cetera. Code the procedure to display the names of the students who earned the grades selected in the LST grades control. And then it should also display the number of students who have earned that grade. So when someone clicks on this, we first need to understand which grade did they choose. So I'm going to do dim selected grade as string, and that's going to be equal to LST grades dot text. Right, so that should give me um, either A, B, C, D, or F. And then what I'm going to do is loop through the grades and figure out if the grade is equal to the grade that has been selected. And if, if so, I'm going to take the name in the corresponding array and add it to this list box, LST names. All right. So on a one dimensional array, the easiest way to loop through it would be a for each loop. So if I do uh, control KX, I want a code pattern, I want a loop and I want a for each loop, I can say for each str grade as string in str grades. And as I do this, I realize this should be str selected grade. Let's keep our variables right. All right. So as I'm looping through this, what I want to do, and I'm going to put some comments in here, um, loop through the grades if the grade is the same as the selected grade, add the corresponding name to LST names. Okay, so I'm going to show you why a for each loop, while it's the easiest loop, um, doesn't really help us here. So if the grade is the same as the selected grade, so I can say if str grade is equal to str selected grade, then we're going to add the corresponding name to LST names. So what is the corresponding name? Well, it's str names, but in what spot, right? Because we need to use an index to figure out what spot of this array we're, we're looking at right now. Like what spot are we in str grades? We don't know because there's no counter in a for each loop. So while for each loop is great when you're just you know looping through an array, when you're dealing with parallel arrays, it doesn't do you any favors. Um, so I'm just going to move my comments up here because my comments are still good. I'm going to wipe out my for each loop. Sorry, you learned a lesson there. For each loops are not great with parallel arrays. Um, so I'm going to do a for next loop, right? And hit escape to get rid of that under that highlighting. I'm going to do for i as integer equals zero to str grades dot length minus one because the length of str grades let's pretend it stops here okay I don't want to would be one two but my index is zero one so when we go through a for loop we're going to go from zero to the length of that array minus one now. I can say 
the grade is the same as the selected grade. So if the grade, what grade are we working on right now? STR grades in spot I is equal to STR selected grade, then add the corresponding name to LST names. LST names dot items dot add. And what are we going to add? The corresponding name is STR names in spot I. Okay, so this will show the person's name if they um, if the grade matches what we selected. So let's try this out. Um, we can see here, if I can line this up, I'm just going to look at Helen and Carl because they both got A's. Okay, and as soon as I move off of that, this thing reformats. So we're just looking for Helen and Carl, at least in my drop down. So if I choose grade A, there's Helen and Carl. Now, one thing that's a little confusing on this is why, you know, we added Helen's name, then we added Carl's name, but in the result, it was in a different order, right? It's Addison, Carl, Helen, Trayson. The reason is this is sorted alphabetically, right? And if we look at this object of LST names and we look at the properties, sorted is true. So that's why it's not appearing in the same order. Now, number of students. Okay, so I'm going to say dim um, int number of students as integer is equal to zero. And every time we add someone's name to this list, I'm going to say int number of students plus equals one. And then down here, I can say, um, I'm guessing it's a label, LBL number dot text equals int number of students to string as a number with no decimal points. So now, if I choose A, there's the students and there's four of them. If I choose C, here's the students and, well, two students were added in. Um, but it added it to our list because we never cleared our list. Okay, I know that's something that we have to do. So let's do that right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm selecting the grade list. I'm going to events. And whenever the selected index changes, I want to run something. Just double click in this box next to it. And when the selected index changes of LST grades, I'm gonna take LST names dot items and clear it. And I'm also going to take LS, I'm sorry, LBL number dot text, and I'm going to make that empty. And another way you can make it empty is you can say string dot empty. All right, but either way, it's fine. You can do string dot empty or you can do double quotes. All right, let's try this again. So I'm going to run this. A, I get four people. When I choose C, it, that immediately goes away, right? That clears these things. Now I have the two there. Okay, that's a good start. So let's fix a couple more things. Um, I'm gonna tell you that this number of students is not necessary. And here's why, let me just, I'm gonna comment that out. I'm gonna comment it out here because we're not gonna increment it. But now, how do we figure out how many students are in our list? Well, I could actually just look at the list. I can look at the items. And I can look at the count property of that items. So LST names is the list box. Items is the collection. And count is how many items are in the item or how many items yeah, are in the items collection, right? So we take this number converted to a string. So I can get rid of int number of students throughout here, okay? And it would do the same thing. Should do the same thing. Yep. And I wonder if, is there anyone? Okay. So all of these display something. Um, I was hoping to get to something that displayed a zero there, but we didn't. Okay. So I think one more thing I want to do to make this a complete application is when you run the application and I hit display. Oh, that's actually not too bad. 
right? If I didn't choose a grade, nothing here, it shows zero here. Um, I just, I wanted to make sure it wasn't gonna throw an error message, right? And it didn't, so we're good there. All right, let's take a look at this here. So we did this bit. The first item in LST grade should be selected when the interface appears. Oh, so we can take care of that. Um, I've showed you before how to just double click on the form to get the form event handler, but I'm gonna show you this way as well. So while you're in your code editor, you have, oh, while we're here, let's put our name and date up here. Today is October 24th to this year. Okay, so we have three drop downs at the top and in the middle one, I'm going to choose FRM main events. And then in the right drop down, this updated and gives me all the events that can happen to FRM main. And what I'm looking for is load. So FRM main underscore load. And that is the same thing as if I were to double click on the form, it takes me to that, which handles the form loading. And when the form loads, I want to do LST grades dot selected index is equal to zero. So this is going to be um, part B. Okay, run this, just double check that works. Yep, A is selected there, excellent. The contents of name and number should be cleared when a different grade is selected. So we actually did that already, that's right here. Let's just say this is part C. Okay, and save and test, which we've been doing, but because I made some changes here, and let me just make sure I have enough um, comments in here. So I'm gonna say this is self-commenting. This doesn't need a comment because you can see that my variable name is selected grade. So there's no re reason to write here, you know, store the selected grade or anything like that. Um, these are good comments through here. You know, this section is together as a loop. This is separate from my loop. So I have a blank line in between, right? Like this is proper code. And heck, even like this is all proper code, but this is easier to read. Okay, so you can see whenever I have a sub procedure, I like putting blank lines in the beginning and end. It's easier just to visually see it. All right, one more time, run this. Always run it one more time. Excellent. So that was Professor Juarez with two single parallel arrays.